Now one of the videos I've done for my members on my website is one of a wood mouse with loads of rocks underneath it as well. So what I'm going to show you today is how I created those rocks. Try and think about the form, the shape and so on, okay? So let's get the bushes wet and let's get started. So I'm going to show you how to paint this. Here we go, you ready? Let's make a start. Let's get a sized material brush, something like this one here. A little bit of burnt umber, any, any kind of mid-tone colour really. Just go over those lines with a little bit of colour. And by doing so, it will help preserve those lines so they stay put when we put a wet and wet wash over the top. Not always, but most of the time it tends to stay there. And they'll still show through afterwards, you know. So that's what I tend to do normally. But I should be able to see these pencil marks underneath here without any problem, to be honest with you. Let's go for size 4 brush, alright? This particular one out of interest is one by Golden Maple and it's a Master Series 1. So wet it all through, first of all, and then we'll drop some colours over the top. Now you don't want it soaking wet, because if it's really wet, it would just simply run down the paper. So just do that on there. Now if you put your head to one side, I know you might look a bit silly doing it, but put your head to one side and then you can see why you've not wetted the paper. Now that's two layers of water on there already, and each layer has soaked into the paper a little bit. Okay. Lightest colour first. Let's go for a little bit of raw sienna, shall we? Here we go. Just drop it quite haphazardly all over the paper. This way you have fun with this, you really do. Just a little bit of colour in there, something like that, leaving lots of gaps in between. And I mean lots of gaps. Well, something like that. <laughs> oh, I love it when I paint rocks. It's good fun, it really is. And I'm going to go straight into the raw umber, which is that one. You ready? Here we go. Ta -da 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 -da. Right, I'm going mad with that one as well. Quite random on the paper, really. You find that, because you're picking up the other colour as well, this will start to mix and mingle together. And it's quite nice, actually, because a lot of these colours will still show through when we have the details over the top. Don't worry too much about dark colours just yet. All we're thinking about is just background kind of foundation colours, really, more than anything. I think something like that should just about do. There you go. Right. But let's go for some other colours. Let's go for... let's go for Burnt Sienna, shall we? Now that's quite a nice colour. Get okay, a bit of that water droplet. And we'll drop some of that in next as well. Not too much of it this time, though. Just using the very tip of the brush. Just here and there, just to change the colour, change that flavour. I know you can really eat rocks, can't you? Get yeah, right. And now I'm starting to consider shape a little bit more here. Now, the drier the paper, the less it will blend, we know that. And sometimes you want it to be slightly dry, not dry, just slightly damp. And when it's slightly damp, you know it could just fade in a little bit here and there, within the other areas. Let's go for some burnt umber. I'm going to start dropping this in where we've got the edges of each individual rock. And I want to slightly cool the colour in place, so I'm going to go for a little bit of blue. And this is indigo. I'll water that down a fraction as well. I'll water it a little bit more. Nice and watery, that's better. And I probably need to blend this in in places as well. A little bit of blue. This is where the light will catch as well in different places. I'll get to my palette in a minute. I'm going to go for a little bit of olive green. Got it too intense. A bit of green in places, just to vary even more. Though. And that can very easily represent moss. Okay, that's plenty. <laughs> I've gone mad with that when I really have on the colours. But that's fine because there's a lot of colour behind the scenes when you're painting rocks. There really is. Obviously, it depends on the rocks you're painting, of course. Right, I'm going to get that a blast with a hairdryer once it's nice and dry, and then we'll start putting some details over the top. Size double zero brush, move my palette around a little bit. This one is uh, Winsor Newton Cotsman Series 111. Okay, I'm going to go straight into the burnt sienna. I'm going to start to kind of pick out where I want some of these rocks to be. And you can vary this colour if you want to between that and the burnt umber. But to be honest with you, this is just to kind of define certain edges. And the good thing about rocks as well, so you can break them. I know you're really strong, aren't you? 
You can break them in half if you want to. Just separate them. Make smaller rocks out of one large rock. One thing I'm going to avoid doing as well, by the way, is put a dark line around the very edge on the top of these rocks here. These are okay because we've got the darker area just above this rock. Because we've got to show the way that this rock kind of curls in underneath, if you know what I mean, and then sits on top of this one underneath this one. Yeah, you know what I mean anyway, I'm sure you do. So that's nicely outlined. Let's go back to my size four. I'm going to wet one rock at a time, okay? Let's show you what I mean. So let's go for this one first of all. I don't know why I've chosen this one, but it's going to go for that one. Well, why not? Why not? So wet the rock, get a little bit of colour. I'm going to go for the burnt sienna, why not? I'm going to drop that into this right-hand side of this rock for now. Maybe a touch here and there, just the right-hand side. And that's already added shape to that rock, just by doing that. This is before we even add any details over the top. Okay. You can go for darker colour. Now this particular one out of interest is a mixture of phalo green and then alizarin crimson to make a nice dark colour. And you can see just on the side of the palette here, the green hint from the phalo green there, which it didn't mix properly, I know. Terrible. We'll drop a little bit of that in there as well, but not much. We will go darker than that as we add to the painting. Okay. So that's one rock already given a little bit of shape, just with a few little washes of colour. So let's do another rock. I'm not going to do the one next to this one because that's still wet. Because if I start working on that, then the water will bleed into this one. So I always jump one ahead, so I always skip one in all words. So I'm going to do this one up here actually, why not? Let's just wet that one as well. So some clean water, nice and clean. And remember the dark is going to be underneath, isn't it? It's going to be dark underneath. Think about where the light source is coming from as well. In this case, it's more or less coming from above in my case. It's like midday really, isn't it? So I'm going to add the same sort of colours within there as well. So burnt sienna. It doesn't have to be these colours. You can use whatever kind of mid-tone colours you want to use. Depends on the colours you want your rocks to be, I know. Just on the underside there, not like that. Straight into the burnt umber. Drop a bit of that in there. A bit more pull. Don't be stingy with it. I know. Terrible. A little bit of our dark colour. The phalo green and the alizarin crimson. Just on the very bottom of that as well. And already... <laughs> We've already got a bit of a shape going on with that one as well, haven't we? We've got this little triangle here. I'm going to make use of that, you know. I'm going to still kind of fill that one in a little bit, just like that. I'll let that blend as it dries. We can even extend this one down and make that join onto that one if you want. So it's all one piece of rock. So that's what I'm going to do throughout these rocks now. So I'm going to fast forward the video a little bit for you. I'm just adding this wash on. I'll come back to you and start to work on the detail layer over the top. As you can see what I've been doing there, look, I've been adding the kind of mid-tone colours, these three colours anyway, mostly, a little bit of blue in places, just to the lower side of each individual rock, just on the damp paper. Then that starts to show a little bit of form. Right, here we go. Nice and dry, size double zero brush. I'm going to go for the burnt sienna. I'm going to start to add in some basic details here and there, just scumbling and stippling and doing all sorts of techniques along the way. 
So you can just see him doing quite random, blah, like that, quite shaky hand in places, <laughs> as you can see. Let's go back to the burn tumber this time. Going to work on this one and start to build up the details as you go along. Okay, so what you can do, darken that little corner area down here. I might darken it again once it's nice and dry. And then with hardly any paint on the brush, I'm going to tap most of that paint off as you saw there. So burn tumber, give it a tap, like that. And then using the side of the brush, I'm going to scumble. Just using the side and catching the texture of this 140 pound paper. That's what it is, yeah. So it's 140 pound cold pressed paper I'm using today. Bockingford is a make. And I'm creating texture on that rock already. Look. There you go, let's get a little bit more. Turn most of that off. Let's do the same on this one, a bit damp on there still, but that's okay, I don't mind. Great texture all the time. Scumbling. This is why it's handy having a, a paper with a bit of texture on. If you use hot press paper, you find it harder to do that. Okay, take most of that off. A little bit of burnt sienna over the top of that in places. I don't need to completely darken it from the top there, so be careful with that. So easy to get carried away, isn't it? And then you realise you put too much on there. So darken there, gonna break it around there, just change the shape a little bit more. All about creating shapes. Bring that up. It's got a little bit of that dark colour on there. That phthalo green and the alizarin crimson. Okay, something like that. Now I do like to use lamp black, believe it or not. It's one of my favourite colours. I know, I know, I know. But recently I've just been mixing my own dark colour like this one here. So if you fancy having a look at mixing dark colours or black colours, anything similar to black anyway, have a look at my video to the top right there. Okay, so I'm going to show you all about that within that video. Then ease off the scumble marks or stipples, which is just little tiny points like that, as you get towards the top. Just ease off them so it's not quite as intense like that. Thinking about the overall curve of each individual rock as you do this. This is where you probably might want to use an older brush because you can ruin your brushes doing lots of scumbling techniques. <laughs> That's why I don't spend a lot of money on my brushes, I really don't. Okay, because of the techniques that I use. And just down to there as well. Already we've got a lovely kind of rock shape going on there. We've even got a little kind of crease coming in the middle of the rock there. And you can just depict that crease a little bit more using the very tip of the brush. Pick it out. And you can make your rocks as detailed as you want them to be, of course you can. And as I add these dark areas in, what I'm doing, I'm leaving little gaps in between like that. Tiny, tiny gaps all the time. And by leaving those gaps, what that will give you is kind of a gradual darkening and lightening of the rocks. So it's going to gradually get lighter as it comes up. And that's what I'm thinking about when I'm doing this here. Right, I'm going to do the same now with the rest of the rocks. It's a little bit of music for you. And I'll come back to you when I start thinking about adding some extra details over the top. What do you mean extra details for? Believe me, you'll like that part. Okay, so stay with me.
You can see this is gradually building up, isn't it? And that's because I'm adding numerous layers of detail here and there. Thinking about the shape of each individual rock all the time. Remember, as I said, that the light area is on the top, so it gets darker as it comes down the side. Now, the gaps in between the rocks, sometimes I make them a little bit wide, let's make just to vary it throughout. That's what I'm trying to do here. And every now and then, I'm just bringing an extra line through, just kind of break it up. So I'm just stippling, tapping in the area, not completely blocking it in. Right, okay, so that's all the detail just about, I see just about on the rocks. Next thing we need to do is add some highlights. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do that with some watercolor white. Then thereafter, I'm going to show you one last technique as I mentioned earlier on. I'm not going to tell you yet. I'm not going to tell you yet. To kind of finish off the painting. I quite enjoy doing that. Now then, here we go. Watercolor white. Let's have a look. I want this really creamy. Just make sure that you're using an opaque white. So if you want to use um, white gouache, you can use that instead. But this is just a straightforward opaque watercolor white. Okay, it's going to roll it, load it, give it a twirl, pull away. Now we can use that for any highlighted spots in places as well. Don't put too much on there. It's so easy to get carried away when you're using white paint. It really is. It's about the top there. Just think where the light's going to hit. Right there. And kind of make the marks quite random as well. So slightly thicker in places like that. Little blobs. Give a bit of a scumble. But don't go into the dark areas. Don't go into the dark areas. Just those raised sections that we can see. This is going to be hitting the sun. So I'm going to put a little bit of watercolour white around there as well. You'll need it creamy though. If you want it to stand out, it's got to be creamy. If it's too thin, then you find it will fade a little bit as it dries. So it won't be quite as bright white. But you know, in some cases, you might not want it that bright. So having it fade a little bit is probably helpful in places as well. Let me give you an example. Look. There you go. Bit of water. Got some water down there ready. Remember, my board's on a bit of an angle like that. So the water will stay at the bottom of the palette. So nice and watery like so. Okay, give it a tap. If I add this here, you can barely see it. It's on there, but it's just dull, very, very faint. So let's add a bit more colour to that now, or colour, white <laughs> colour. <laughs> and we'll add that one in. Now we know with this one, it could fade a little bit now as it dries. So it won't be quite as bright white as, say, around there. And that's the beauty of it. So you can really vary the watercolour white. And if you think it's too bright, when you paint it, let it dry, and then what you can do, go over the top of that again with a little bit of colour. In one fell swoop, one very light pass. So all you need to do. Now I'm using the very tip of the brush, and I'll stress the word very, very tip of the brush, just to add some of these highlights in there. And that is plenty for that one rock. Believe me, that's all you need. And every now and then wash your brush out because I find with watercolour white is that it can clog those bristles up if you're not careful. So what will happen is that the white will go into the metal ferrule and they can simply do like that. That's the way your bristles will go. It makes that noise as well actually, it really does. Yeah. So I'm going to carry on with this and add a bit more watercolour white in places now. And we're back in a minute, okay? So enjoy the music. Now then, this is a technique I wanted to show you right at the very end. Really. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some torn pieces of paper, okay? Some scrap paper from the printer, anything like that will do. I'm going to just block off all the areas around the rocks. As near as I can get it anyway, it won't be perfect, I know. Now this is my old mixing brush. This is synthetic as well. And see how worn it is? Mm, that's why I use it for mixing, you see. Nice and dry. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to load it with some paint. Make sure, by the way, <laughs> that your paint is more of a milky to watery consistency. Something like that. And then take some of that paint off on some kitchen roll first. 
and then very lightly pull back of your finger like that. Look. And you can, from a distance, from a distance, you can then start to splatter your painting. You can just see the splatter marks on the paper here, can't you? Just make them out. Look at that. Oh, look at that. And the more paint you load on the brush, the larger the splatter marks will be. Obviously, what you can do, a bit of burnt somber, is get a piece of tracing paper, lay it over the top of your rocks, draw around it, and cut out that middle, and then, cut that all up, and then you can then mask it off completely, then properly, can't you? Okay, clean your finger and clean your brush. You need your brush to be nice and clean, okay? Then we do the same with the watercolour white. Now you need this more to a milky consistency, otherwise it won't splatter. And this will add, look at this, ooh, very faint splatters. That's plenty, plenty. Calm down, ball, calm down. On the rocks. Now if you fancy having a look at some videos I've got here on YouTube on how to paint texture, have a look at the link to the top right. I'll see you there. Now, do you have a special brush which you use for painting rocks, for stippling and creating different textures? If you do, let me know in the comments down below. Okay, I'd be quite interested to hear about that.